So it is Friday. It's a Friday evening, the 2nd of August, 2024. We seem to be having some thunderstorms passing through Queens here in New York. And you know, let's get straight to it. My title about Barjag Yobinas, about the strip United States, if it was in connection with uh, the Mohammeds. Uh, as some of you would know, the Vice President would normally hold his um, press conference on Thursday, but this time he had his press conference on Wednesday because he was flying out to the United States uh, yesterday, which is Thursday. So right now, he's somewhere, uh, most likely in New York. Anyway, let's get to some talking points I have. My first one is the reaction to the AFC's proposal to bring back the 2 a.m. curfew because they're saying that there's a spate of accidents happening on the road with people getting killed. And if they were in power, they would want to introduce the 2 a.m. curfew. Surprisingly, their partner, the PNC, they are against that uh, 2 a.m. curfew. I could remember when their former Home Affairs Minister, Kemraj Ramjatan, when he imposed that 2 a.m. curfew, he was saying that a lot of housewives were thanking him, they were lauding him, they were saying, yes, Mr. Ramjatan, uh, you're doing something very good because our husbands are coming home very early. Of course, uh, the young ladies who, who would have been working in those nightclubs would have been glad to get home early because most of them would have been using uh, public transportation. But obviously the nightclub owners would have been unhappy and that unhappiness would have shown a dent in their profits. So obviously they were against it until the PPP returned to power. Personally, if I were in that position, I voted for the AFC 2011-2015, and I were a, uh, a nightclub owner, there's no way I would have donated money to the AFC scoffers. As I said repeatedly, election campaigns is about bringing in money, bringing in money from business people. And you can't expect nightclub owners to donate to your party when you want to introduce that 2 a.m. curfew. So I think, in a sense, the AFC may have shot themselves in the feet because the PNC, they have distanced, distanced themselves away from that. The other thing that is trending, the elections in uh, Venezuela, um, President Maduro is claiming that he's won the elections. The opposition party claiming that they've won the elections. A lot of confusion going on there. And to my surprise, the Prime Minister of St. Vincent, Raul Gonzalez, is claiming that the elections in Venezuela were free and fair. Of course, um, my PNC friends are going to be saying, Mr. Green, look, look what's happening there. That the same Rav Gonzalez who was saying that the elections was free and fair in Guyana. Of course, he told a certain gentleman by the name of David Granger to take your legs like a man. I think Ralph might have spoken prematurely. The OAS, they're condemning the results of that elections. The Carter Center sent a 19-man team. They're also condemning those election results. And now I see a couple hours ago, the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, is saying that the United States are recognizing the opposition as the winners of, of that elections. Maduro has already expelled seven, um, the, the, the diplomats uh, from seven Latin American countries that condemned the results. Let me see if I can remember those names. Uh, Argentina, Costa Rica, Chile, Panama, Peru, Uruguay, and the Dominican Republic. I see some people are asked in the comment section about Guyana's stance and what's happening with Bangladesh Charles. Well, President Ali has said that there should be some sort of verification in, the, in, the, the, in terms of elections and um, results. If he comes any stronger, as uh, uh, like what the others, the seven Latin American countries um, had done, surely they, they would expel um, Van Westchild. So the Ghana government, they have to tread softly. I guess they don't want Dr. Van Westchild to be expelled from Venezuela. So we have to watch that and see where that's going. I also noted that uh, a number of GCOM officials before the court, and this, this should be a warning to... Um, People who are in public service, 
those GCOM officials would not have been working on their own. The seniors would have been passing on orders to the juniors. And they had to be politicians, issuing instructions to those senior officials. I could remember working in elections in 2001 as a polling clerk. I was born and bred in Queenstown, Georgetown, and I worked as a polling clerk at St. Gabriel's School and Crown Street, Queenstown. So I have an idea of what is the atmosphere and what goes on when people come to vote. A lot of nonsense that people talk on social media. People have never had that experience. Uh, you just have to sometimes smile to yourself. Uh, so, those politicians that try to pass orders to the seniors, and now you have to go to court, you have to climb the steps of the court, the politicians, them, they are in the shadows watching on. I hope the lawyers, the lawyer and lawyers are charging pro bono. If not, the, these same politicians should have some sort of go find me for you guys. They try to uh, manipulate you and use you. And there are now no way to be seen. And I hope they make some sort of uh, financial contribution to your defense. The other stuff I was alarmed about is the, the Lance Corporal and the Corporal of the Grand Defense Force in uniforms trying to transport marijuana. I think it was about 126 um, pounds of uh, marijuana. And a couple of weeks before, there were two sergeants. They were involved in. Um, I think it was 100, 100, one of those, um, if I could remember, one of those um, catches were 154 pounds, the other one was 136. So I'm saying to myself, um, the former chief of staff, so deceased, uh, who are dead, they are probably rolling in their graves. People like Colonel Ronald Pope, people like Brigadier Clarence Price, they are probably rolling in their graves. Look what's going on in the Ghana Defense Force. We still have Major General Joe Singh and Major General Norman McLean. I guess they are probably flabbergasted what's happening. But then when I heard the Vice President's press conference, he was saying that under the coalition, similar um, stuff was going on in the Ghana Defense Force and it was swept under the carpet. It was hidden from the media. That's why the BP said something to myself. Well, it seems as though under both PPP and PNC governments, stuff goes on in the um, joint services, and maybe certain things are swept under the carpet. I don't know. These politicians are not to be trusted. So we move on now to the fiasco of when the new Denra Harbor Bridge is going to be completed. The government is saying 2025. David Patterson through the AFC is saying 2026. Uh, it would make sense for the government to want that new Harbor Bridge to be completed before elections, which is supposed to be held before November uh, 2025. It would be the interest of the opposition for the bridge not to be completed before November 2025. So, so you see. In almost every statement issue or counter statement, some sort of politics um, is to, uh, involved. Soku said they had an order from the High Court. They got permission from the High Court to seize the, the, in fact, not to seize, to freeze the bank accounts of the wife of a senior Ghana police force official who is right now in, in broil in financial irregularities in the Ghana police force and who is on leave. I wouldn't call any name. Of course, most of you would know who I'm speaking of. But what I'm saying is that this is another monster that is allowed to grow. There is no way that the government officials, especially high-ranking officials, would not have known that they would have gotten intelligence about things that are going on in the Ghana Police Force, just at the Ghana Defense Force. And in the case of the Ghana Police Force, you want to buy loyalty, you decide to turn your head turn your face, turn a blind eye, and the monster just keeps growing and growing, and now the monster has gotten out of control, and something has got to be done about it. And that is why Robson Ben, the Minister of Home Affairs, had to issue a statement, it's about time that something be done about the Ghana Police Force, that procurement, um, that procurement department. 
because I guess it's, it's gotten out of hand, it's, got, it's gotten overbearing. And that's why you heard um, Vice President Jack Doyle, uh, previous, not this last press conference, uh, last week talking about party officials in some of these regions trying to give um, their friends and family um, in collusion in terms of um, government contracts. He said it. The CIA and the DIA have personnel in Guyana, and I'm certain those guys know a lot more about what's going on in Guyana than actual um, Guyana officials who probably were just throwing a blind eye to what's going on. Um, as some people asked me to comment on what's going on with the elections, the campaign here in America. So I see um, black Americans, some of them, uh, they have some doubts. Some of them are saying that if you are Jamaican, you're not African. As you know, Kamala Harris's father is from Jamaica. Some of them are saying that he calls himself um, Afro-Jamaican. Although Afro-Americans are saying that, hey guy, wait, 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 hold it right there. You don't have to be an African-American to be called African. So there's a whole lot of drama going on out here. Uh, and I also have a clip I'm going to add on to the last where the coalition, they had a protest by the PNC for a, a new voters list. And there's a protest outside of GCOM that will be included in this video. The rain is about to start falling. Have, have a happy evening. A happy Friday evening. I'll see you guys next week. Your visit to the United States having anything to do with the recent decision by the Treasury Department against the Mohammeds? No, nothing oh. to do with that. Nothing to do with the Treasury Department and the Mohammeds. Dr. Jagdeo, Milton Granum for Oil Now. Other than the low carbon development strategy and other measures already in place to climate proof Guyana, does the government plan to put any other measures in place to climate proof Guyana? So we have to step up our plans for the integrated water management strategy. And we have a, the draft terms of reference and a draft strategy already. Dr. Jagdio, Mikhail Rodriguez for Daybreak News. Just for clarity, um, you were asked about your visit uh, to America, upcoming visit, and um, you were unable to give the details of what that visit would be. Uh, given the manipulation of the news media in this country and the importance of the role you play in the development of this country, just for clarity, um, is it government's business or political business? And does it have to do with the development of Guyana? Simple. Does it have to it do with development to do with in the general? Development of Guyana. That's it. Government it's business or political business? Government business. Roger that. We're out here again today calling for a clean voters list. In fact, what we really need is a new voters list. And in the process, we must use biometrics to co compose that list. We're going to continue for this call because we know that the current voters list, even after claims and objections, still showing that the list is padded by more than 200,000 persons. And we cannot go to an election with, more, with a list that is padded with more than 200 persons. So we will continue this call every Tuesday until all the ABC countries and the Caribbean community listen to our calls and help us that the voters list in Guyana is spotted by ex in excess of 200,000 persons and we need a clean or a new voters list and biometrics must be used in the process of composing that new list. Clara Singh! Must go! Clara Singh! Must go! Good day. Today we want to once again call for a clean voters list and biometrics, which is very important for general elections in Guyana. Um, we out here today making our voices heard. We have seen comments in the media um, from the vice president 
saying that they're confident of winning the next election. So we want to call on him this today to come and join the call for clean voters list and biometrics. Because if you're so confident, then you would want to see the voters list clean and the use of biometrics will help to give us results at a faster pace. So today we continue to make this call to all Guyanese to join your voices and let the world know that we deserve to have a clean voters list and the use of biometrics in our next regional and general elections. And this call we will continue to make each and every day as we are out here again calling. We need a clean voters list with biometrics. Thank you.